Welcome to the Quantitative Analysis Institute. Today I'm going to talk about missing data. What it is, why we care, and what we can do about it in R. Missing data is when you have data that is missing. For example, in this little missing data spreadsheet that I created here, we have subject number, and you can see the place where it should say 3 is just skipped over. Maybe somebody was entering it and they just forgot. It doesn't really matter. For year of birth, it says NAN. This stands for not a number. This means that the computer couldn't comprehend whatever was put into that cell as a number, but it knows it should be, so it's just put it displaying not a number. You might have blanks for questions that your respondents might have filled out, such as this identify as Latina column and somebody's self-reported GPA. There are other codes that show for missing data, such as N slash A or NA, that somebody might type in into a survey if it, they were answering a question like, what is your birth order? And they might be an only child. Some statistical programs and other software programs will use negative 999 as a code for data that doesn't exist. So what can we do about this in R? So first of all, we need to read in the data set. So we can read in this data set and we can pull it up. Since it's so small, it's no problem to print it out to the console. As we can see, it shows NA instead of a blank for this where subject number 3 should be. It still shows not a number where we showed not a number before. For the blank for this character question, it is still blank, but for the blank in the GPA column, it's displayed as NA. The N slash A is still present as it was in our original spreadsheet, and the NA was turned into an NA with these little brackets around it. Somebody's shoe size is still listed as being negative 999 because R doesn't understand that that's not a real shoe size. Same for favorite animal. It thinks that negative 999 is a perfectly reasonable favorite animal. Now we can see what R thinks about these different columns in our spreadsheets based on the amount of missing data that they have. So it still understands that subject number is a numerical variable. Same with year of birth. It understands that Latina identify as Latina is a categorical variable, but it thinks that blank, no, and yes are all options, but really all the only options are yes or no. For self-reported GPA, it understands that it's a number. For birth order, however, it thinks that because we have this n slash a, it thinks that that's an option. It thinks that there are a discrete number of options, 1, 2, 3, 4, and n slash a. When in reality, you could have lots of children and you could be the sixth child. For shoe size, it also understands that it's a number. For favorite animal, again, we think that negative 999 is an option for your favorite animal. Alright, so what can we do about this? What we can do is we can use this function called is.na. And so if you look up that help page, it'll tell you that you put in an R object for the um, argument, and then it will spit out true if there's nothing there, or false if there is something there. So I performed this on Tiny, and now let's pull up Tiny again so we can compare. As you can see for subject number, it says that this NA means that there's nothing there. That's good. It also says that this NAN means that there's not something there for your birth. It doesn't understand that this blank in identify as Latina column is missing. It thinks that that's a value. For self-reported GPA, it thinks that NA is missing, which is good. For birth order, it understands that the NA in these little brackets is missing, but it doesn't understand that this N slash A here, it thinks that that is something. The negative 999, it just thinks is a number.
If there are values that R doesn't automatically recognize as missing data or missingness, you can easily tell R which strings constitute missingness. The only caveat to this is that you have to tell R all of the strings that constitute missingness, because otherwise some of the strings that it previously thinks are missing data, it then thinks are real values. So let's read in the data set again, and there's an additional argument that you can add called na.strings, and you place in a vector of strings that constitute missing data. So here we have nan, na, and slash a, negative 999, and blank, which is just one set of double quotes with nothing in between. So now if we pull up edit it tiny, we can see that this turns the missing strings into NA in all of the numeric columns, and NA in these little brackets in the character columns. Okay, oh, that's the dog, NA. Now that R knows what's missing, let's see if it's able to correctly identify the numerical and character columns. So let's summarize the data set. Subject, it knew before that it was a number, it still knows it's a number. Year of birth, it knows it's a number. Identifies Latina, it knows its character, and better yet, it knows now that there are just two options, no and yes. Self-reported GPA, it knows it's a number. Birth order. Now it understands that birth order is actually a number instead of a character. Shoe size, it knows is a number. But as you can see, our minimum is not thrown off because now it knows that the minimum shoe size in this data set is 5, not negative 999. For favorite animal, it still knows it's a character, but it doesn't think that negative 999 is an animal. Alright, so now we can see that all of the strings that we specify, if I do is.na edited tiny, and then I pull up tiny again, we can see that the na gives true the not a number gives true, blank gives true. We can see that our um, n slash a gives true, our negative 999 gives true. This is important because you can use this function and say, if this gives false, perform this function with the data. This way you're not trying to perform an operation on data that doesn't exist.